Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm just going to go over an example on finding the deflection and slope of the end of a cantilever beam that is subject to a single point load. So basically, once we apply that point load on to this cantilever beam, it's going to bend down something like that, basically. And uh, what we want to do is we want to figure out exactly with, uh, in terms of P, how far down this is going to deflect. We'll call that Y. And we're also interested in the slope here. So just uh, what is that end slope? We call that theta. So in this video, we are going to generate an expression for y, an expression for theta for any point along the beam. But typically, like I can see here that the maximum deflection will be at the end here. Think about if this was a diving board, right? Like if you stand there, the end is going to be bent down further than the parts over here. So we're typically uh, interested in the maximum deflections for problems that are like this. Uh, so if you remember from the last video, we have this expression where we have d squared y over dx squared is equal to the expression for the moment in terms of x over ei. So we need to figure out what the moment in terms of x is. So basically we can do that. We can take a virtual cut in this beam. We know that we have p pushing down. We draw on our shear force and internal bending moments with their positive sign conventions. And then we can just pick off with the sum of moments here that m, the internal bending moment in terms of x, basically, right, if x is going that way, is going to be negative px. Okay, so we can plug that in and we can bring over ei. So we have ei uh, times d squared y dx squared is going to be equal to our expression for m, which was negative px. Um, I guess before we continue on, the one thing that we should do at the beginning of the problem too is identify our boundary conditions. So we do have two boundary conditions that we can see off of this. Um, I know that at y, er, sorry, at x is equal to L, y is going to be equal to zero, right? There, there will be no deflection here because the wall is staying put. This is a rigid connection. And then also we know that at x equals L, theta is going to be equal to zero because this is a rigid connection and this 90 degree uh, angle will be upheld even once the rest of the structure has been deformed. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to integrate both sides with respect to x, you know, from zero to x. So when we do that, we're going to get ei, well, the integral of the second derivative is just the first derivative, dy dx. And then when we integrate this, we get x squared over 2 and then the negative p just like that and then also we are left over with the integration constant so we'll call that c1. Another way that we can write this that will be convenient for us is uh, we can replace dy dx with theta because this is just the uh, that's another way we can call it dy dx is the slope we can also write that just as theta so we will also say that ei theta is equal to negative px squared over 2 plus c1. All right, so this is a very important expression that we have. We're going to keep that separate from the rest. And actually, what we can do is we can use this. Uh, we can use our boundary conditions now to solve for what c1 is. So if you watched the last video, it was a little confusing maybe about what the boundary conditions are for and how we use them, but this is exactly what we do. We have a theta in here and we have an x in here. So we look at our boundary conditions and we have one that includes x's and one and also thetas. So basically we set every x to l, x equals l, and then every time we have a theta, we set it theta equals to zero. So we're going to use this second boundary condition here. So I or ei theta, theta is equal to zero, so this whole term is going to be zero, but we can just write it, we can just write it all out. EI theta is going to be zero. This is equal to negative P X squared. Well, we set X is equal to L, so that's going to be L squared over two plus C one. All right, so we can bring uh, this, so this will go to zero. We'll bring P L squared over to the other side. So we have P L squared over two is equal to C1. All right, so we just found out what one of our integration constants is. That's perfect. Let's put a big square. Oops, not a line through it. Let's put a big square around it because we're going to have to come back to that as well. Um, now what we want to do is we want to keep going. We still want to continue uh, integrating this again. So we're going to integrate both sides one more time. So we will be left over with 
um, we have ei well the integral of dy dx is just y and this is going to be equal to the integral of this so we'll have x cubed bring the 3 down so we'll have negative p over 6 plus c1 x right we're integrating with respect to x and we get that extra integral uh, the next uh, integration constant here which is c2 okay um, but we do know what c1 is c1 is pl squared over 2 so we can uh, we can rearrange this or we can just fill that in so we have e y is equal to negative p x cubed over 6 plus p l squared over 2 times x so we have p l squared x over 2 right that's that times x plus c2 okay so let's go and put a green box around this because this is another no not a green line <laughs> green box um, this is a super important equation that we're going to have to come back to again as well but what we want to do is we want to figure out c2 now so we're going to use our other boundary condition where we had x at x is equal to l y is equal to zero so in here we have y's and we have x's and we have c2 so if we set all of these y's equal to zero and all of these x's equal to l then we will be able to figure out what our second integration constant is so the y's have to be equal to zero so we have e i times zero is equal to negative p so we're setting the x's equal to l so this is p l cubed over six plus p l squared times l so i'm going to rewrite that as l cubed over two and uh so this is one sixth that's three sixth uh and then this is plus c2 so that's all going to go to zero so we have three sixths minus one sixth that's two sixths which is one third that's positive one third so we're going to find out that c2 is equal to negative one third pl cubed all right so Let's throw a blue box around that because that is one of our integration constants. So like that. Uh, and now what I want to do is I just want to update these expressions that I have in the green boxes to make sure we're including C2 and C1 because those are known now. They are no longer unknown. Um, so for EI theta, let's, let's do this one first. Actually, no, let's do this one. Uh, EI times y is equal to negative p x cubed over 6 plus p l squared x over 2 plus c2. c2 is a negative there, so it's minus 1 third, or we can write it the same way we've been writing it. So minus p l over 3, uh, and that l was cubed. All right, so I'm going to throw this box again around this, um, and that is that is this guy. We just now we've solved for C1 and C2. Uh, we want to just do again. We just want to fill out this expression with the with the known integration constant in it. So we have e i theta is going to be equal to negative px squared over 2 plus c1 and c1 is this positive value so we get pl squared over 2 okay cool so look at that we used our boundary conditions to basically solve this uh, the second order differential equation right we found y so if we were in a differential equations course like mission accomplished right um, so we're like that um, and these are actually the expressions we can uh, we can even rearrange these to say uh, exactly so y is going to be equal to basically 1 over ei times all this stuff and I can probably copy and paste that so you don't have to keep watching me write it uh, so y is equal to that maybe I'll bring it down uh, Right, y is equal to 1 over ei times all that stuff. And then theta is equal to, again, 1 over ei times all that stuff. So times 
that. So we'll bring that. All right. So there we go. Again, let's uh, throw green boxes around this so we, uh, not green lines, green boxes. Green box, boom, boom. All right. And again, just so we're following along here, that turns to that, and that turns to that. So there we go. We have actually defined the expression for y at any point in x. So you want to plug in uh, at x equals 0, we're going to find the deflection here. x equals uh, l over 2, we'll find the deflection here. x equals, you know, l, we'll find the deflection there, and actually that would, uh, that would be 0 in that case. Um, and then same here, where we can plug in any x value and uh, basically we'll find the slope at that point. But typically with these types of problems, like I said at the beginning, we're really interested in the maximum deflection. And the maximum deflection will be occurring here because of that whole kind of diving board effect. So if we want to do that, um, we're saying that x is equal to 0, x is increasing to the right. So if we just want to find what the deflection is at x equals 0, we just set x equals to 0. So, so we'll say at x equals 0, y is going to be 1 over ei. Well, this term will go to 0, this term will go to 0, and we'll still have times negative PL cubed over 3. So at x equals 0, we can clean that up a little and just say that this is going to equal negative PL cubed over 3EI. And uh, let's put a red box there, just change the color. Um, this was the original question. And as long as we're told what the point load is and the length and the E and the I, you know, you can actually generate this, this uh, answer in uh, millimeters or if you, often you're just asked to give it in terms of P and L. So that would be the answer. Um, and then same thing when we want to find the slope at X equals 0. So basically the slope at the left-hand side of the beam. Well, we're going to have theta is equal to 1 over EI times this term is going to go to 0 because it will have that uh, we'll set x to equal to 0 and then we have PL squared over 2 so theta here at x equals 0 is just going to be more cleanly written as PL squared over 2 EI and again Usually, uh, often in tests or assignments or whatever, you'll be asked to put it in terms of P and L, but if you are given values, you could easily put this into the actual, um, the actual slope in radians. So there we go. We found the displacement and the slope at the end of this cantilever beam.